you guys. Good morning. Um, it's been so awesome to hang out with you guys. Just like yesterday, and then just getting aligned with my mini classes mission. And I, I mean, I was like looking on the website, and I just didn't know what I was about. And then coming here and talking to Aaron, and like what his mission is and what he's trying to do, I was just totally blown away because it just aligns a lot with what I'm trying to do as well. So, needless to say, I'm super excited and humbled to be here. So, um, I get asked a lot, well. Uh, what I do and that's always a weird question for me because I never know how to say what it is that I do because I do a lot of things um, and I do the same thing I'm always like so politely what do you do um, but so um, what do I do many things I'm a sustainability weirdo that's the best way for me to describe it I love all things like we can talk about renewable energy affordable housing like feeding like um, the world is starving, pulling people out of poverty, everything about um, a more sustainable planet excites me for the possibilities of people leading better lives. Um, so that's everything that I do, but I guess for my credentials, I'm a social entrepreneur, I'm a consultant, I sit on the board for a company called Pick Waste that is trying to address the uh, root of the world's waste problem, I host two online series, um, I'm a speaker, that's what I'm doing right now, so I am a speaker. Uh, what else? That's, that's, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Oh, and my company. I'm a two-time founder, um, Hug Sustainables and Consulting, and then another company that is yet to be announced, but essentially we're going to be empowering the homeless community and um, working to get people out of extreme poverty. So, that is what I do. Um, with my company, I help companies eat, sleep, and breathe sustainability and just kind of establish themselves as a green brand and then everything else that I do just goes towards um, helping people help themselves and like get them back to contributing and always building towards a more sustainable now through some sort of social impact. So um, the next question that comes after what do you do is well, why do you do that? Um, so I, why do I do it? My life was fundamentally changed when I went on a trip to the Philippines. I'm half Filipino and I got to go back and visit a lot of my family in the Philippines. Um, so it was really bizarre to me that when I was having conversations with all these people that lived in these remote villages, um, you know, like their electricity would go out and their electricity would go out. They wouldn't have access to their water because they have electric pumps and things like that. And in having conversations with, you know, um, all these people, the only thing that they said that they wanted was a good job so they could take care of their family. And I think that's across the board, like across the board in the world, like that's what people want, a good job so they can take care of their families. And um, it really bothered me because they're the best jobs that you can get in remote villages or you can drive a trike or a jeepney or you can work at the local Jollibee. Um, and you know, they're not making living wages and things like that. And so it became my life mission um, to be able to give people access to jobs and uh, to be able to pull themselves out of that. So. On the plane ride home from the Philippines, I decided that building a more sustainable now was going to be my life mission. I had no idea how I was going to do it, but I was going to wing it. And um, I went down the rabbit hole with that, and I discovered that almost half of the world's population lives in extreme poverty. So, like, what is that, like 3.5 billion people live in extreme poverty. And I, I still can't. I just refuse to live in a world where half of the world's population lives in extreme poverty. And so, Again, that's why I do what I do. Um, but anyway, for the life of me, I couldn't figure, I couldn't find a job that would effectively have the impact that I was wanting to have, which is why what Aaron does aligns so much with me, because it's like looking for that job that's going to have that impact. Um, so I set out to do what I could, and business is an amazing tool to be able to make change and have a greater impact in the world. So that's what I did. Uh, I realized that. In being born in the United States, I kind of hit the birth lotto, I guess you could say. Because, <laughs> re I mean, truly, like, we're very fortunate to have been born here. And I realized, you know, going back to the Philippines and seeing the hut that my mom was born in, that that could have easily been me and that could have easily been my life. And what I have known um, that I wanted, you know, more for my family and things like that. So I know how fortunate I am. And I just, I know it's my duty to make sure that other people can have access to opportunities as well. So anyway, moving on, business venture. I quit my job that I had, having no idea what I was doing, and I started a company, and I failed a lot, and I failed really quickly, thank goodness, and that business like is non-existent. But then I started another company right after, and um, 
So that's kind of a long segue into what I want to talk about. But so basically, I started this adventure again. It failed. Um, I didn't have a community of people behind me that believed in me. And so I do have a company that I run, and it's running successfully right now. It's still going. I'm still in business, so that's great. Um, so what's different now? Um, what's different for me is. LinkedIn, actually, and that sounds really weird for me to say. And I know talking to a lot of you, um, you're looking for um, just other, you know, you have to do ads and things like that. And LinkedIn can be a really powerful tool for you to generate leads. 100% of my business comes from LinkedIn. 100% from people that I've met, like Lila, who are friends that will refer business to me, and I will try to refer business back. Like not even like, oh, this is what I'm going to do for you. It's just you're my friend. I know that you do this, this is what I want to do. And so that's something that you can do for, with your company. Um, people will know that, oh yeah, this is so-and-so, shipping containers. If I know what, if I come across any companies that need shipping containers, I know that I can send them to you, and, and you know, and it, it's nothing for me, just because I already, that's what you do, that's what you're about, you know? So, um, so how did I do that? Well, I guess first that you should know, well, we're living in the digital age, right? So if you aren't actively creating your digital stamp right now, you're gonna be defined by your digital shadow, which is like weird Facebook pictures, like pictures that people have tagged you in that you don't look cute in, um, <laughs> things like that. So it used to be all about who you know, now it's about who knows you. And I stole that from my friend, Jacob W. So that's not actually mine, he said that first. But, so my journey on LinkedIn, I started to have like 400, 400 people that I had been connected with that I had directly worked with. And when I started using LinkedIn, I was strictly using it in my B2B job, looking um, to meet with CEOs and just try to get meetings with them. And that's all that I did, I just went on there, wasn't trying to hang out, wasn't trying to get to know anyone. Um, but around this time last year, LinkedIn video launched. And I didn't know that that was a thing, and I didn't know it was a thing that I should care about. But I happened to be connected to someone, and he was posting about issues in the workplace, in the world, like real stuff. And I didn't know why he was doing that on LinkedIn. I was like, what is this? Um, but I couldn't stop watching because it was things that I wanted to talk about, things that I wanted to have a conversation about, but I didn't have a platform to do that. And uh, so I saw him doing it, so I kept following him, and then I ended up getting involved in what was called like a campaign, one of those hashtag campaigns, um, but it was called Let's Get Honest. And people were posting videos about whatever it was, anything. Just get honest, be your authentic self, and talk about something that you really want to talk about. And so I talked about how I, every morning, or every day, I had to go into a corporate job, and I felt like I had to be a totally different person. I felt like I had to like have my briefcase and have my work voice and shake hands and be a business lady, you know? Um, and I felt like a fake and I felt like a fraud. And I put on that video and I got an influx of messages from people that I didn't even know from like all over the world, literally all over the world. And they were like, I feel like that too. And I'm so glad that you're talking about it. And we just had these amazing conversations. And from there, Oh my gosh. I mean, I didn't, it wasn't cool to post videos on LinkedIn when I started doing videos on LinkedIn. Like, it was cool on YouTube and uh, whatever, you know, doing whatever it was on Instagram, but it was not cool on LinkedIn. There was a very small population of people creating videos. Um, so I just started creating these just original, just videos of talking about things that I wanted to talk about that I thought would bring value to other people's lives. Um, and so from there, I grew a following of 400, which I think now I haven't, I think it's like 18,000 or 19,000 um, of really engaged following and, and people that I have really strong relationships, friendships with, and things like that. Um, so it's been kind of crazy. With I think a lot of people don't know about LinkedIn is right now is your organic reach on LinkedIn, which is where you don't have to pay for it, like you don't have to, like on Facebook, to get reach, you have to pay for ads and things like that. Right now on LinkedIn, you don't have to do that. You can just post a video, and you know, 10,000 people might see it, 150,000 people might see it. Um, so you kind of never know. My videos, to, I mean, it can get anywhere from 5,000 to 150,000. Um, so I can go viral, mine haven't gone all crazy yet, but it's wild. So again, 100% of my business comes from LinkedIn. And um, what else? 
can tell you this about this. Yeah, I mean, so many opportunities. I built the, the, the consulting side to my company, company. I launched as a direct result of my following that I built on LinkedIn because there was people that were needing these services and, and nobody was doing what I was doing. And so I, I built the consulting side so I could be able to give that to them. So it's been absolutely amazing. And then I've been able to, man, I spoke at a LinkedIn Master Summit in May. Uh, right after that, I traveled to Barcelona and I led a workshop in Barcelona. And then, I mean, I'm here talking with you guys and I think this is way more magical um, than being in Barcelona, to be honest, just because it's so amazing to have people that really align with what you're trying to do and just, I mean, just want to support their families and, and just do like honest work. I think that's amazing. So, um, yeah. So, how did I do it, right? Um, you know, and, and this like, it has nothing to do with me, which is so funny now. It's, all, it's always been a collaborative effort from LinkedIn. It's never a, like, I want to win, I want to win, like, and I'm going to push everybody down to win. It's been, hey, even if we're in the same industry, it's like, hey, how can we like help each other? How can we work together? How can we collaborate? Because you know, if one of us wins, we know that like everyone around us is going to win. Um, so I, I think that's super amazing, and um, you know, and I, we've really built this community um, focused on addressing um, the root of, of certain issues, and we're always looking at how we can serve others. So I think it's really incredible. Um, but so what I'm going to give you now. Is my four tips to use social media sustainably. And I think this will help you guys. And I keep it super simple just because this is what I have to do now. Because when I started out doing this, I, I didn't mean to build a following. I, I, I was like nobody. I, I never recorded a video of myself in my life. Um, but I put out this one video of me getting honest and um, just being vulnerable and it just resonated. And so I kept doing more of that. So Literally anyone can do it, and your video is going to resonate with someone, but you have to know certain things. Um, okay, so number one, be consistent in your message. Don't build this outrageous personal brand. Um, when you meet someone, you want them to feel like they already know you, and you need to be aligned with what you're putting out into the digital world. So just be yourself. It's as simple as that. Be consistent in what you're talking about. Um, one thing, a huge thing to being consistent in your message is knowing your why. And I'm sure have you guys talked about this at all? Why Simon Sinek? Anybody know? No? Yeah? Okay, cool. Okay, so your why, which is your overarching, it's why you wake up in the morning, it's why you do every single thing that you do, it's what keeps you going when the work gets hard, or when order when your business is falling apart. Like it's what keeps you going. So Nietzsche said, uh, he who has a why to live for can bear any how. So as long as you have your why to hang on to, that's going to help you continue to be consistent in your message. And if you don't know why you're doing what you're doing every day, um, it's pretty, it's not, I'm going to say it's easy to find it out, but you can just start by asking yourself questions. Uh, what do I love to do? What does the world need? What am I good at? And how can I make money doing these things? And when those combine, that's the magic moment that you find your why, be consistent, you can always carry on with that. So, um, yeah, I think that's it on that one. Okay, number two, provide value, always. If you're putting out content that's, hey, look at me, look at how wonderful I'm doing, that's great, you might get something from that, but when you're providing value to others, that's when like, it's going to be, you're not gonna know what to do with yourself and you're gonna have to hire a team of people to handle everything that's coming in. It's because you're focused on serving others and you're not focused on feeding your ego. You're just like, how can I provide value? So always make sure that the, the videos that you put out, they're useful. It's something that your younger self would have liked. You can, I mean, these are just questions you can ask yourself. Would I have liked to have this a year ago? Is this something that would have helped me if I was just getting started out with my mini casa or whatever it is? Um, oh, do I like this? Make sure you're making content that you like. If you don't like it, why would you put it out? You know what I mean? I mean, I, if you're providing value, you're probably going to like it. So um, those, are, those are some of the questions that you can ask. Um, and know your objective, know your point, know why you're making the video or the post or whatever it is. Know what your objective is with each post and always provide value. Number three, build community. And this is essential. 
You can't just jump onto any social media platform and take, 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 and never give anything back. You have to focus on what you can give, and you have to support others. And you can't just expect people to support you if you're not supporting others. So build community and show up, no matter what you're doing. I honestly, it, you can show up in so many ways and show all the way up and be all the way there. Um, every single thing that I do is a promise, or every single thing that I show up to is a promise to myself and a promise to the world of what I'm trying to accomplish. So um, when I say show up, it just means so much more than just like, okay, I'm here, I'm here. It's not showing up. Because you could show up, but you could be totally checked out and someone else. Um, but just showing up, amazing thing ha things happen. I know when I first started having this following on LinkedIn, people would invite me just to different events, or they would say, hey, I'm speaking at this thing, and I would just love for you to come out. And it was sort of, and I didn't know them from anyone, but I would just go show up, and then I would meet all these amazing people, and it would remind me why I show up in the first place. Just because everyone is doing something. Everyone is doing something. And everyone, it just, it's so amazing to be a part of, and then you continue to show up for people, and then you continue to collaborate, and it's beautiful. So if you don't know how to show up, and if you don't know how to build a community, the easiest way to start, Lila, is an amazing, like, we met because she commented, like, these very thoughtful comments on my post. And I was like, who is this lady who is, like, dedicating so much time to getting to know me? And, and so I wanted to do the same because I just thought that was so amazing. But, like, she didn't know me from anyone. But she would comment on these thoughtful comments on my post. And it wasn't just like, hey, great post, and thumbs up. It was like, hey, you know, this really relates to an experience that I've had. And like, this is what happened because of it. And this is what it showed me. And then she would ask like, a question at the end of it to like continue the conversation. And then we uh, would message, and then we would jump on calls. And it's been like that with a lot of people. So just take an interest in other people, and that community um, that you're looking for, or even that you're not looking for, will start to go up around you, um, and it will be wild. Uh, one thing that was huge for me, if you're not involved on LinkedIn, is LinkedIn Local, which is Local X now. Um, but it's essentially a meetup where you meet, and instead of it being like a networking, hey, how are you, this is what I can do for you, and this is my business card, call me if you need this, it's like, hey, I see you and I just want to get to know you. What do you, what do you like to do? What do you do for fun? Um, you know, just talking about the family, things like that. We just got to know each other on a deeper, more fund fundamental level. And then the business started to come after because we had this really strong network of people who were invested in each other. So build community was number three, super important. Um, number four, this is my bonus tip. Um, use social media, don't let it use you. I was just having this conversation with someone, and technology is kind of this crazy thing that shrinks the world into this tiny little ball, and it can fit, actually it's a phone, it fits in your phone. <laughs> and so the world is actually in your phone, and that's crazy. So we have access to all the, all the remote corners of the world, and um, yeah. And so it can be very, because of the dopamine rushes that you get when you check the notifications and things on your phone, it can be very addictive because dopamine is great, and I love dopamine rushes, right? But it can turn into constantly scrolling through your phone and looking at people's lives and judging yours for not being like theirs. And you're not in Bali right now. You're not on the beach. You're at work. And you're, you know, I mean, you're just, you know, it's, it's a rabbit hole, and you can get stuck in that. So always use social media. Don't let it use you. Um, I was talking about how I will set blocks for myself with social media, and I have to be very intentional when I use social media. Why am I getting on this? What am I trying to accomplish? Who am I, am I trying to, like, and even if it's just, I just want to go engage with people and see what content's being out there. So I can go and I can scroll for 30 minutes, engage, comment, try to check my messages that people have sent me, see if I have any leads or new clients that I need to respond to, whatever it is. But always use social media with intention. So those four tips. Be consistent, provide value, build community slash show up, and use social media, don't let it use you. Um, I would say those are gonna be the biggest things that'll help you in, I guess, integrating my mini casa into LinkedIn, or whatever it is that you do. So, and here's my four random tips, just for continuing on it and leading a more um, sustainable life, and it has nothing to do with not using plastics, and that's a whole nother talk, and I won't give it to you right now. <laughs> Um, 
But number one, be here now, wherever it is that you are, even if it's a crappy situation, be all the way there. Just be there and feel whatever you need to feel. And if it's a good situation, be all the way there. Um, number two, don't stop growing, no matter what. Don't get comfortable for too long. If it scares you, go do it. I mean, unless it's like skydiving, like I'm not gonna do that. Or like the cannibal. I did not want to ride the cannibal yesterday. But Lila was like, yeah, sure, I'll do it. And I was like, well, I can't look like a lame -o. Like everybody else is riding. I'm not gonna stand here waiting in line, like waiting for them to go ride this awesome ride. Um, so yeah, it was actually scary and I'll probably never do it again, but I did it. And I know that I never want to do it again. So, <laughs> so don't stop growing, walk through fear. Number three, don't take yourself so seriously, ever. Ever, you're not that, like, nobody is that important. I don't care if you're the president, I don't care if there's, like, ever gonna be a one world global leader, they are not that important, no matter what. So don't take yourself too seriously. And number four, no one does anything to you, they do it for themselves. Everyone's just running around living their life, so don't take anything personally. Everyone's just living their life, and you're just living your life, and it's beautiful, and I love it, and that's all I have for you guys, so thanks.